I mean, I, I, I tried working abattoirs, various factory buildings. I could not hold a job down. I got bored, you know. It's not fast enough for me. I'm, I'm one of the proudest thing I, I, I have in my heart is the fact that Black Sabbath wasn't a band that was created by some big boss mogul guy. That was four guys and said, "Let's have a go. We have a dream," and it came true beyond our wildest expectations. Do you feel immortal? No. I, I feel lucky to be alive. I'm immortal but, uh, because. I've done some pretty damn crazy stuff in my life. If people recognise me, I'll, I'll get very humble. But at the same time, if they don't recognise me, I'll get kind of upset. You know? <laughs> I mean, I can't remember playing the Crown Pub in Birmingham at Henry's Blues. And, I, and I'm thinking, well, this is, this is good for a couple of years. Drink a few beers and have a jam. We get to Europe. And that was the beginning of the most incredible adventure you, I could ever think of. Ozzy Osbourne, the end of Black Sabbath. Why? Oh well, you know, it's been it's run its course really. I mean, I, I live spend most of my time in America now, and Tony and we, we, we just felt right, you know. I mean, it just felt right. Who's suggested it first? You know what? I can't. I, I don't even know. I can't remember. But um, it's really good to be finishing the last, very last show in Birmingham, where we, in Birmingham, where we first started, or 49 years ago. That's amazing. So somebody said, well, "What do you, what do you feel like now?" And knowing that the, 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 the gig after tonight is the end, it's kind of been, it's kind of been, put in a barrel and rolled down the biggest mountain in the ever, and you can't, you know, and you like, 49 years later. But it's just, it's, I, I can't believe myself half the time. When I, when I stop and think, wow, you know, it's mind blowing. I mean, when, when we did the first Black Sabbath album, I can remember thinking, ah, it'll be all right for a couple of years. Not for, I mean, it's a, it's a bit of a blessing. Best, I had the best life out of it. And, and when, I, when I started, I, I came from a very uh, low end side of the town. So to do what I've done and to meet as many. I'll tell you a story. When I was about, when I was about seven, my, it was Christmas Eve, and my dad said, I'm, you can stay up tonight because I want to show you the most beautiful woman in the world on the TV. And I, I, I felt blessed, you know, that my dad let me stay up. And it was Elizabeth Taylor. Now, I, I had, cut to 2003, I had the, we had the Osborne thing on, and I'm in, in my house with Elizabeth Taylor, and I'm like, this is unbelievable. And I flashed back to my father, because when, when he showed me this woman, I remember thinking, I've seen the most, because uh, my dad let me, you know. I thought she was the best. And it was really an interesting thing that happened when I met her. This is a time when you can look back at what Black Sabbath have achieved. What would you say they've achieved? Well, I, it's, very, it's very difficult for me to answer that question, because I'm in it, you know. When people come up to me and say, we're not worthy and all this, it's, it's kind of like, why are you being that way? I mean, to be honest with you, if people recognise me, I'll, I'll get very humble. But at the same time, if they don't recognise me, I'll get kind of upset. You know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's Black Sabbath are credited with creating heavy metal. When did you realise you'd invented it? Well, when, when we did the Oz, Oz first, um, bands of course, and said, man, it was, you know, uh, you were really an inspiration for us to start a band. And I, for the longest time, I thought, why do they keep saying this? You know, as I, as I said earlier on, when you're in the eye of a storm, you don't realise it's so bad, as, or, or as good, or as bad as it is. And so, looking inside out, all I was trying to do was survive through, the, through you know, when I say survive, musically, we've had everybody opening up for us over the years. And they've all gone up the ladder and come down. We're still coasting on. But, I mean, it's, it's all down to the audience. If the audience ain't there, you ain't got a gig. You know, it, you know it's like, it's just, a, it's been remarkable. It's been absolutely remarkable. I mean, I, it's had its good times and its bad times. But through, through it all, the music, I mean, I mean Tony Naomi's a great guitar player. Geezer Butler's a great bass player. 
And Bill was a great drummer. Unfortunately, he didn't make it with us, but... I mean, I can't remember playing the Crown Pub in Birmingham at Henry's Blues. And, I, and I'm thinking, well, this is, this is good for a couple of years. Drink a few beers and have a jam. We get to Europe. And that was the beginning of the most incredible adventure I could ever think of. I've met some amazing people. I've, met, I've, I've experienced so much good, bad, and, and all. I mean, it's just been phenomenal. And I'm a Brummie, you know. I mean, I mean, people that you know, you know, Liverpool created the Beatles and all them, the Liverpool sound. But Birmingham has had just as many big bands and groups and music as any any of these other towns. I mean, great, great. Why is that? Why? Is I, I don't know. I, I mean, you ask me, I'm one of these guys that go, that plus that. Oh my God! And I thought, I don't want to know. It's just that it is and. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm one of the proudest thing I, I, I have in my heart is the fact that Black Sabbath wasn't a band that was created by some big boss mogul guy. That was four guys and said, "Let's have a go, we have a dream," and it came true beyond our wildest expectations. By 1985, one in every five albums sold in the United States was heavy metal. Yeah, yeah. That is a heck of a legacy for four guys yeah, from Birmingham. Just, but you don't realise, I mean. You, I, I, I met Paul McCartney and he, and he said to me, you know, we just used to sign things and we didn't know what we were. And I really hope he wins his case to get his publishing back. But it, it, it's just been a, an incredible... You couldn't write the story. Because people wouldn't believe it, you know. I mean, I, I branched out, did my own thing. And, I, and, and, and it's like putting an old jacket on. It fits. When I'm with these guys on stage, it just fits. <laughs> What did Black Sabbath save you from? Because you had some very dodgy jobs. I believe you were actually a horn tester yeah. in a car factory? Oh, my mother got me that job. Because I, I could never hold a job down. I was born to do this thing, I think. If not, nobody else in my family or re relations or any, any to do with showbiz. But it's just, I, I, as I, say, I said before, I mean, I, I, had, I tried working in was uh, various factory buildings. I couldn't ever hold a job down. I could get bored, you know. It's not fast enough for me. And the horn testing, that has got to be... Well, well, I, could, I could say that was my first musical job. <laughs> <laughs> it was, I mean, what, what did that, I asked this guy how long he have been doing it. He says, 35 years, and I'll get my gold watch at the end of this year. Oh, not for me. I was on... But I had two choices, either be a bad criminal, or a stupid criminal, or, a, 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 a rock, or an entertainer. Uh, and so when, my, when, I, when I didn't pay a f bunch of fines, my father let me go in to Winston Green for a few, few days. And I, I worked, because I didn't want to go back there again. Gosh. And now here we are. Yeah. The final ever Black Sabbath show is upon us. How emotional are you, uh, you know what? Since I've got to this building today, I've been happy, I've been tearful, I've been, and I never thought I would be. I thought, I, and people would go, how do you think you feel as you're on the, the last note of the last, the last gig you're ever going to do together? It's really, uh, it's emotion, my emotions are flying all over the place. Let's see what happens. <laughs> but it's, you know, it's great to be, be doing this in, in, uh, in Birmingham at the end of it, because if it wasn't for Birmingham, I wouldn't be here anyway. Birmingham made me. Do you think you'll make a speech during the last... I, I don't know. I, 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 I'm, nothing's rehearsed. I, I've got to say something, but I'm no good at speeches, but I'll say something. I mean, it's, it's, I, I'm, I'm, I'm the spokesman for the band, I don't know. I know I mean, Tony's, Tony battled on this tour uh, before we did the, the, the 13 album, lymphoma, and he got over that. I mean, it's it's just a whirlwind of emotions are going on now. I hope it's okay. Do you feel immortal? No. I, I feel lucky to be alive. I don't mean immortal, but, uh, because I, I've done some pretty damn crazy stuff in my life, you know, which I don't drink anymore, I don't smoke cigarettes anymore, I don't do drugs at all. And I just... Oh, that's been like five years now. She's, she's great. A bit from Ozzy Osbourne, to not have a beer. <laughs> How are you feeling? Pardon? How are you feeling? 
great. I, I, I mean, I was stoned or something every day for a long time on beer or booze. Or, I don't want to do that anymore. So when the Prince of Darkness <laughs> is up on that stage... It's just the Prince of Darkness and God. Singing Paranoid yeah. for the last time. No, I... Will there be a tear? Uh, I don't know. It could be, I don't know. I don't know. Do you promise us you're not going to get back together for the 50th anniversary? This no, is it. This is definitely it. I mean, I tried, I tried retiring for my solo thing at one time. And then, you, what I've learned, you have to have something that you want to retire to. I'm not stopping. I'm, I'm going to carry on with my own, back, my own thing. But it, I, I, after a while, I go, no, well, I, it's not a job. It's a passion, what we do. It's, I mean, people work to come and see a band, and that's where I'm It's not a job. You don't wake up at 5 o'clock in the morning and stand and wait for a cab. It's, it's just a, a, a blessing. I'm, I'm, I'm the luckiest man alive. So if you were to sum up your time in Black Sabbath, 49 years. Well, I, I wasn't with Black Sabbath for 49 years. I was with them for about 15 or something. But it, it, Black, if, it, Black Sabbath created... Me and I'll create. We, we were always a, four, when you think what four people have, together have created comedy, it's pretty good. I'm, I'm, I'm just, I, I look back and I go, I mean, my, my wife and I are celebrating 35 years of marriage, and I said to her the other day, this is this year, be 35 years. I'm like, how have we got, what happened to the time? It's crazy time. Flies. As I'm getting older, it gets faster and faster. I love the fact you just summed up Black Sabbath as pretty good <laughs> and you were mentioning how you like it when people recognize you reality tv brought uh, you to a whole new generation uh, I, I, I don't i didn't like it because um, it got too crazy it got too, I, I remember stopping at a, a, a mcdonald's with the kids one day and it would turn into like this lunatic asylum but it, that, that there's a level of fame that you cannot sustain that level of fame it's like people start chipping at you you know and people, with, with that reality thing, people would come at me and give me advice how to take care of my dog, you know, and start yelling at me, you know. It's weird. You think I'm a prisoner of your own success, but it's all part of the trip. Well, Ozzy Osbourne, you have reached the end of your final ever TV interview as a member of Black Sabbath. All right. God bless you. How does it feel? Great. <laughs> <laughs>